Hello there. In modern society, we are becoming incredibly reliant on wireless communication, but without the radio spectrum, none of this would be possible. The radio spectrum is responsible for the propagation of data for some of our favourite activities, such as watching TV, listening to the radio, browsing the internet, or making phone calls. But what if one day, all of this was suddenly interrupted? You see, the radio spectrum is a finite resource. As technology progresses, more and more of the spectrum gets used up for various purposes. One such example is the influx of smart wireless devices with the rise of IoT, otherwise known as the Internet of Things. As a result, we will eventually run into issues such as congestion, interference, and lack of coverage. How can we optimize the use of such a limited resource? One method is effective spectrum sharing. Here is an explanation. Perhaps in your location, the 95 megahertz to 100 megahertz frequency band is not being used, or maybe it is only used for six hours at night. For the remainder of the day, it is sitting idle with no data transmitting over this frequency band. Spectrum sharing leases this frequency band for other purposes. This can be used to boost internet coverage, connect more voice calls, or transmit more data concurrently. Our project, the Real-Time Radio Spectrum Map, consists of an Android application and an RTL SDR dongle, which records the radio spectrum in your current area. This is able to help us identify any unused spectrum bands which could be shared. This data is stored securely in a cloud database and lastly presented in our website for all of you to analyze. I now pass it on to my project partner to present a demo of the real-time radio spectrum map. Thanks, Anthony. So before we start, please make sure you own an RTL SDR dongle. These are commonly used to watch TV or listen to the radio on your phone or computer. But in this case, we have built an Android application which can utilize this dongle to record spectrum data. Some purchase links are found in the video description below. Next, you can download our app on the Google Play Store. Once installed, be sure you have a stable internet connection and that your GPS is turned on. Next, we will plug in the RTL SDR dongle. When the following prompt is shown, tap on OK. On the first launch, you will be asked to provide the app some location permissions. This is used to locate your device so we know where your spectrum data came from. Here, you can see an inbuilt map which should pinpoint your location. You can also tap on View Debug Info or look at the four checkboxes to get an idea of what the application is doing at all times. Now when you tap on Run, it will prompt for Write Permissions. This is used so we can temporarily store your spectrum data before it is sent to our database. You may notice that the log says sleeping for X milliseconds, or in this case, 3000. This is a synchronization period, which is used so that when we have multiple people using the application, it ensures that all your recordings are taken at the same time. This reduces the amount of variables in the recording environment, such as the time of day, weather or interference. Once the waiting interval is complete, you will need to tap on one last prompt, which allows the application to read data from the RTL SDR dongle. Now we can see that spectrum data is officially being recorded. A short moment later, you will see that the checkboxes have updated, showing you that recording is complete. And now you can safely turn off the application. Now that we have recorded some data, let's view it on the website. You can navigate to spectrumdatabase.org, which will bring you to the main dashboard. Here you can see there are three main elements, a Google Maps window, a statistics area, and a spectrum graph. Notice that when you move around the map, there are dots which range from green to red, showing you where data is present and how much white space there is. When you click on a location, the statistics and the graph is automatically updated with the most recent data from that area. When you hover your mouse over the graph, you can see the individual power levels at different frequencies. Highlighting an area of the graph allows you to zoom into a particular section or you can use the slider above. The View Spectrum drop-down box allows you to view the 10 latest recordings taken at this location. If you click on Loop Time Lapse, 
a scrolling animation is played, where the 10 latest records scroll through every 3 seconds. You can click on stop looping at any time to cancel this animation. Here, we can also search for spectrum data using the text input field, which allows you to directly look up an address. What happens when you click on an area with no data? Actually, a push notification gets sent to the nearest user, requesting them to record data at the specified location. Here is an example. On the website, we also have an about page, which gives some background information on the project, some of the technologies used, and the members involved. To sum up, the real-time radio spectrum map has a variety of uses, such as locating idle radio frequencies in real time to facilitate spectrum sharing, and secondly, allowing the government or regulators to monitor how the radio spectrum is being used. This could help identify potential breaches of law, such as transmission over restricted frequencies. Google has a product called the Spectrum Database, which will be our nearest competitor. Compared to their offering, advantages of our product includes the ability to record spectrum data anywhere around the world at a lower cost, recording spectrum data in real time using live push notifications and crowdsourcing, and leveraging the use of an attitude sensor on phones, allowing us to identify white space across all three dimensions. So this brings us to the end of our project demonstration. There will be many more exciting outcomes for this project in future. Be sure to stay tuned for any updates. Thank you.